Hello everyone, I hope you are all well. I am your instructor for today. Today we will be looking at the concept of corruption. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what corruption is, explain key concepts in anti-corruption and identify the various forms of corruption. Some of you may have heard of the word corruption, others may have not. If you have heard of the word corruption, you may still learn more about it through this video. If you have never heard of the word corruption, this is an opportunity for you to know and understand the word. Let me introduce you to the Adade family. They are Mr. and Mrs. Adade, Elom, their 13-year-old daughter, and Nyameke, their 10-year-old son. The Adade family were having dinner one evening. On television was showing the news at six. The word corruption was mentioned to have been one of the problems in the country. What's corruption? I have never heard of this word before. Oh, really? Don't worry. I'll help you know more about corruption when we're done with dinner. After dinner, Mr. and Mrs. Adade are seated with their kids. Mr. Adade begins. Hello. You asked a question about corruption during dinner. I am glad you asked. It is indeed one of the reasons why we are not developing as a country. I will narrate some scenarios to you. I believe these scenarios will be helpful to you understanding the concept of corruption. I expect your honest answer or opinion to these questions. Bring your book and pen and write down the answers to the questions. We will discuss them later. Viewers should pay attention to the videos and answer the questions Mr. Adade asks. There will be a short pause after each question to allow you answer the questions, but you can still pause the video if the time given is not enough. You can compare your answers to the discussion Mr. Adade and Elom will be having. You can also discuss your answers with your peers your tutor or any other interested person after the video. Mr. Adade comes back in. Hello. Now listen to these scenarios carefully. Scenario 1. Ni's family pays Ikea's family to agree to the marriage of Ni to Ikea without Ikea's consent. Do you think it is right or wrong? And why do you think it is right or wrong? Scenario 2. A head of department in one of Ghana's universities tells a lecturer to give higher grades to his daughter, otherwise the lecturer will be sacked. Is there anything wrong with this? What do you think is wrong with this? Scenario 3. A company wants to win a government contract. The company promises to pay for a holiday for the head of the contract awarding board and his entire family should he be awarded the contract. Is the company acting right? What do you think is wrong? Will you accept the treat if you were the head of the contract awarding board? Scenario 4. A government officer, a public official, uses the office car for his ministry to take his friends to a funeral at the weekend. Is this right or wrong? Why is it right or wrong? Scenario 5. A government officer gets a job for her cousin as an accountant at her office. The job was not advertised, even though her cousin Shamima is an excellent accountant. Was the government officer right in employing her cousin? Why is she right or wrong? Scenario 6. A candidate for a municipal chief executive, MCE position promises a voter money or a job in the municipality if he or she votes for him. Is that right or wrong? Why is he right or wrong? What is the offense if he is wrong? Are you writing your answers down? Yes, I am. All right, there are a few more scenarios to go. Keep writing your answers down. Scenario seven, Jonas told a bus conductor that he was too late to buy a ticket. The conductor offered Jonas a half price fare if he does not take the ticket. Do you think the bus conductor has committed an offense? 
If yes, what is his offense? If no, why? Scenario 8. When Charles failed his driving test, the instructor told him that for a small payment, he could get his driver's license without taking the test a second time. Is the instructor's behavior right or wrong? Why is his behavior right or wrong? Scenario 9. A celebrity is stopped by the police for a traffic violation. Asked to show his driver's license, he makes a phone call to the officer's boss who asks for his release. Is this right? Why is this right or wrong? Scenario 10. Selassie is stopped by the police for a traffic violation. The official fine is 100 Ghana cities. Selassie does not have the money with him and he asks the policeman to process him for court. How much do you have? Asks the policeman. Selassie said, 20 Ghana cities. The policeman takes it and says, goodbye. Did both do the right thing? If no, what offense have they committed? Scenario 11. The company Odikro Limited takes part of a school construction tender. It gave mobile phones to the members of the tender committee to facilitate work of the committee. As the representatives of the company put it, the tender committee accepts the gifts and awards the contract to Odikro Limited. Is this right? Why is this right or wrong? Hello. I'm sure you found some of the scenarios or all the scenarios wrong. If you did not find any wrong scenarios, don't worry. I am sure you will by the time we finish discussing them. I don't want you to show your answers to me, but rather keep it and compare it with the analysis I am about to make. Listen carefully, Elon. Transparency International, an anti-corruption NGO, defines corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. Entrusted power is the power given to people in position or authority to act or make decisions. What corruption means is using the entrusted power for your personal benefit and not for the purpose for which the power was given. In the scenarios above, can you identify people who abused power entrusted to them for private gain? If you cannot identify any, don't worry, I'll help you. In the scenarios given, specifically scenario 4, a government officer uses his office car to take his friends for a funeral. Was he using the car for the right work or not? Obviously not. An office car is meant for office work, not private stuff like sending friends to funerals. What the government officer is doing is corruption because he is abusing the power to drive the public car for his private gain. Do you understand? Similarly, the case of the bus conductor in scenario 7, collecting monies without giving tickets is an abuse of power given to him to collect monies. He is now collecting the monies into his pocket, private gains. The head of department in scenario 2, who instructs the lecturer to give higher grades to his daughter, is also abusing the power to hire or fire by threatening the lecturer. This is what corruption means. Corruption simply means abusing the power entrusted to you for your private gain. I guess it's very simple, right? If you cannot identify any, don't worry, I'll help you. In the scenarios given, specifically scenario 4, a government officer uses his office car to take his friends for a funeral. Was he using the car for the right work or not? Obviously not. An office car is meant for office work, not private stuff like sending friends to funerals. What the government officer is doing is corruption because he is abusing the power to drive the public car for his private gain. Do you understand? Similarly, the case of the bus conductor in scenario 7, collecting monies without giving tickets is an abuse of power given to him to collect monies. He is now collecting the monies into his pocket, private gains. The head of department in scenario 2, who instructs the lecturer to give higher grades to his daughter, is also abusing the power to hire or fire by threatening the lecturer. This is what corruption means. 
Corruption simply means abusing the power entrusted to you for your private gain. I guess it's very simple, right? Now, Elon, I want you to think about or go back to the other scenarios and see if you can identify corruption in them. I hope per Mr. Adaday's explanation to Elon, you all understand what corruption means now. Now look around your community. Do you see or experience some of these scenarios? I bet you do. Corruption exists all around us. It exists at many different levels. We may not easily identify some. For instance, if your neighbour gave preferential treatment to a friend or relative in her business dealings, is that corruption? What if a parent donated to a school in order to prevent the expulsion of a child? How about you lived in a conflict-ravaged country where food supply is limited and you pay the officials a little bit of money to get extra rations to feed your hungry family. Let me show you a representation of the performance in corruption of some countries over the last six years in the sub-Saharan region. As at 2017, Burkina Faso was the least corrupt country at 74th position, followed by Ghana at 81st position. The most corrupt country was Nigeria at 148th position. This is clear evidence to show that corruption exists all around us. Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso show consistency and progress in corruption, but countries like Ghana, Benin and Nigeria remain inconsistent. Now let's go back to the Adade family. Mr Adade did stop after explaining the meaning of corruption to Elom. He continued by explaining some key concepts in corruption. Let's go and listen to what he tells Elom. Now that you understand what corruption is, I am going to explain some of the key concepts in corruption to you. First, I will mention them and then give examples. Some of the examples will be taken from the scenarios I already narrated. Now, Elon, the first key concept in corruption is taking bribes. Charles Ayamdu, the director of anti-corruption unit of Shiraj in 2011, stated that any gift that a public officer receives, which will change his lifestyle significantly, is not a gift, but a bribe. This means that if a civil servant makes an agreement to accept or accepts promises or gifts in exchange for acts or omissions, contrary to his duties, he is guilty of taking a bribe. An example can be seen in scenario 10, where Selassie is stopped by the police for a traffic violation. The official fine is 100 Ghana cities. Selassie does not have the money with him and he asks the policeman to process him for court. How much do you have? Asked the policeman. Selassie said 20 Ghana cities. The policeman takes it and says goodbye. This is a typical case where the policeman is guilty of taking a bribe. The second key concept in corruption is giving a bribe. The person who promises to gift or gifts a civil servant in order to influence him not to perform his functions or perform his functions in a certain way is also guilty of giving a bribe. In the example above, Selassie, by agreeing and giving out the 20 Ghana cities to the policeman, has committed an offense of giving a bribe. The 20 Ghana cities given by Selassie prevented the policeman from doing his work. The policeman would have processed him to court if he refused to pay. That was the right thing to do. Daddy, so does that mean that when I give my class prefect candy so that he does not write my name as a talkative, I'm guilty of giving bribe and he's guilty of taking bribe? Exactly so. You are very right, my son. Another important key concept to look at when it comes to corruption is embezzlement. Transparency International defines embezzlement as when a person holding office in an institution, organization or company dishonestly and illegally appropriates, uses or traffic funds 
and goods entrusted to them for personal enrichment and other activities. For example, a cashier in a bank receives cash deposits from clients. She secretly puts some of the cash in her bag. She uses that money to pay for lunch and order an Uber home. Her actions will be classified as embezzlement, which is a corrupt act. Fraud is the next concept we will look at. Dahim's Law Dictionary defines fraud as a deceitful or deceptive conduct designed to manipulate another person to give something of value. For example, a civil servant forges the signature of his boss on a check in order to withdraw the company's money. In this case, he has intentionally deceived the bank to gain an unfair advantage over his company by forging the signature of his boss. This is what is termed fraud. Another concept to look at is abuse of office. Section 46 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act 2011 defines abuse of office as an act where one uses his or her office to improperly award a benefit to himself or another person. According to UNESCO's Ethics Office, some forms of abuse of office include bullying or harassing, pressuring staff to break rules or distort facts, and interfering with the ability of a colleague to work effectively. Examples can be seen from Scenario 5, where a government officer gets a job for her cousin as an accountant at the office. The job was not advertised, even though her cousin is an excellent accountant. And Scenario 2, where the head of department in one of Ghana's universities tells the lecturer to give higher grades to his daughter, otherwise the lecturer will be sacked. These are typical examples of abuse of office. They use their offices for their benefit and the benefits of their relatives. Daddy, are you saying when Auntie Aggie helped my cousin Maoli get a job in her company, she abused her office? Yes. Employing relatives who are not competent or without giving other potential candidates a chance is what constitutes to abuse of office. In this case, Auntie Aggie influenced the board to employ Maoli even though he was not qualified in the field. What Auntie Agi did is what we call abuse of office. Oh, okay, I get it. I'm glad you do. Now, let's continue with the other key concepts in corruption. Scenario five can also be used to describe the key concepts, nepotism and conflict of interest. Nepotism. Transparency International defines nepotism as a form of favoritism based on acquaintances and familiar relationships whereby someone in an official position exploits his or her power or authority to provide a job or a favor to a family member or a friend even though they may not be qualified or deserving. In scenario 5, a government officer gets a job for her cousin as an accountant at her office. The job was not advertised even though her cousin is an excellent accountant. This is pure example of nepotism. The government officer used her position to secure the job for her cousin. There is a possibility there could be more qualified and deserving people out there for the job had it been advertised. But they were denied the opportunity because someone wanted to favor her cousin. This is typically nepotism. Conflict of interest. According to Shiraj in a guideline on conflict of interest, a conflict of interest arises when there is conflict between a given person's duty as a public officer and his or her interest as a private person. Assuming in scenario 5, the government officer does not only employ her cousin, but she also drives out frequently to attend to a supermarket she owns in town. There will be two instances of conflict of interest in this case. First. Employing her cousin is an example of conflict of interest because it is her public duty to employ competent people and not people of her personal interest. She should be working in the interest of the public and not her own interest. Secondly, attending regularly to her supermarket would conflict with her daily duties as a government officer. Do you get what I mean? 
Scenario 6 will touch on the key concepts of corruption known as clientelism. In Scenario 6, a candidate for a municipal chief executive MCE position promises a voter money or a job in the municipality if he or she votes for him. Vote buying is a typical example of clientelism. Leonard Wan Chicken, a professor of politics in 2003, defined clientelism as transactions between politicians and citizens whereby material favors such as goods and services are offered in return for a political support at the polls. The municipal chief executive candidate promising people money and jobs in return for their votes for a position is what is known as clientelism. It is an unequal exchange of favors where the powerful candidate is exploiting the weaker voters. Now, let's discuss another concept of corruption known as lobbying. Transparency International defines lobbying as any activity carried out to influence a government or institution's policies and decisions in favor of a specific cause or outcome. Scenario 11 explains the concept of lobbying. In Scenario 11, the company Odicro Limited takes part in a school construction tender. It gave mobile telephones to members of the tender committee to facilitate the work of the committee. As the representatives of the company put it, the tender committee accepted the gifts and awarded the contract to Odicro Limited. Don't you agree that the donations of the mobile phones influence the committee to award the contract to Odico Limited? I agree the influence of committee's decision because they would think awarding the contract to Educo Limited will give them the chance to receive more gifts from Educo Limited in future. That's a nice analysis. You're a smart girl. Now I am convinced that you understand and can explain all the key concepts in corruption. Yes, Daddy. I'm sure some of the answers you wrote down to the questions after the scenarios may change if I ask you to go back and re-answer them. But don't worry, the most important thing is that you understand what corruption is now. I am sure, like Elam, a lot of you understand the key concepts in corruption now. Can you remember them? Mention the concepts you remember. The key concepts in corruption are taking bribes, giving bribes, embezzlement, fraud, abuse of office, conflict of interests, lobbying, clientelism and nepotism. Now we will look at some forms of corruption. It is important to note that the key concepts in corruption are also some forms of corruption. There are many forms of corruption and they are difficult to classify. What makes the task more difficult is that in different countries, different crimes are considered corruption. Bribery may probably be an exception. What may be considered as corruption in one country may not be considered as corruption in another country. These are the various forms of corruption. I will be giving you an assignment to refresh your understanding of the concept of corruption. But before then, let's summarize what we have learned today. We have learned the definition of corruption from Mr. Adade. Do you remember what it is? Corruption simply means abusing power entrusted in you for your private gains. What else did we learn from Mr. Adade? We learned the key concepts in corruption, right? What are they? The key concepts in corruption are taking bribes, giving bribes, embezzlement, fraud, abuse of office, conflicts of interests, lobbying, clientelism and nepotism. We have also seen the forms of corruption, right? What are they? The forms of corruption are taking, extorting or giving bribes mismanagement or embezzlement of state assets, unlawful use of confidential state information, trading in influence and using it for personal benefit, election fraud 
and interference with elections. Dissemination of erroneous information to mislead investigators. Illicit enrichment and damage to the public service. Now analyse the following scenarios and answer the questions that follow. This assignment is meant to enhance your understanding of the concept learnt. You can discuss your answers with your peers, your tutor or any other interested person. On the eve of the end of the school year, two teachers found that one of the students had missed more than 20% of instructional hours for several subjects. According to the regulation, the student should repeat the class. Both teachers had increasing offers by the family of the student who risked repeating the class, but they refused to change the number of the student's absences. One day, the father of the student walks by the two teachers, stubbornly, and after saying, there are regulations but there are friends too, he enters the office of the principal, and then smiling, he walks out of the office with the head of school. A few days later, the student's name was on the list of students who have been promoted to the next class. Both teachers check the register, and to their surprise, they notice that some absences had been justified, and a few others had been erased with a white marker. They inform the school faculty about this occurrence. The head of school reminds the teachers that he is the one who decides and that many jobless teachers have queued up outside the school gates waiting for a job. Questions for discussion. Do you think there was corruption in this case? If yes, how? If no, how would you categorize the act? What are, in your opinion, the reasons that push people into corruption in schools. Do you justify these motives? Why? What do you think of the conduct of the two teachers? Does this happen in your school? What should be the teacher's next line of action? Scenario 2 Ayele and Ibrahim are close friends in Kings and Queens School. These friends share their joys and sorrows together. One day, Ayale advised her friend, Ibrahim, that he, Ibrahim, should learn more, as Ibrahim's average grades were too low. However, Ibrahim was happy that at that time, the average grades were not a prerequisite for higher education. At some point, the Ministry of Education decided that competition for university admissions would be based on the average high school grades. Ibrahim was concerned for a few days, but then he regained his composure. Ibrahim was later admitted into one of the universities in highest demand, while Ayele was admitted into a university where admissions were open and less preferred. Surprised, Ayele asked his friend, How come you were admitted to one of the most preferred universities? Ibrahim replied, there are teachers and principals who are invincible, difficult to manipulate, but with an administrative assistant, you make miracles. 1. Identify potential instances of corruption in this case. 2. In what forms did corruption manifest in the story? 3. What would you advise a friend who prefers corruption or easy solutions? Okay, that is the end for today. Hope we meet again. Next time, I'll be discussing the causes of corruption.